Hello everybody, welcome to episode one of Okami. Okami, Okami. It's your boy Double J here. I guess when you guys have seen this, it's May 5th. One day after May 4th. Cutscene, everybody. Long, long ago, a tiny hamlet known as Kamaki lay nestled in a grove of proud and beautiful cherry blossoms. Each and every tree around the quiet burg was honored as a god. However, the village was not without its dark secrets. To satiate the appetite of Orochi, a fearsome cave-dwelling beast, a young maiden was offered as a sacrifice at the annual festival. With a body like a mountain and eight heads mounted on its on necks of the size of tree trunks, its blood-red eyes alone were said to curse anyone whose gaze into them. No one dared disobey the horrific beast. When the night of the sacrifice drew near, a mysterious white wolf appeared outside the village. This wolf, its coat as brilliant as snow, was dubbed Shiranui. The wolf kept a watchful eye on anyone who ventured outside the village and made a habit of patrolling the streets at night. People assumed the wolf to be a familiar of Orochi. One villager took it upon himself to face the fearsome Shiranui. The warrior Nagi attempted many times to challenge the wolf, but his attempts were thwarted by Shiranui's swift movements. Before long, the night of the accursed festival had arrived. A white plumed arrow heralded the coming sacrifice. Piercing the sky, the arrow sunk its shaft squarely into the home of Nami, the village's most beautiful maiden. Nagi, harboring a secret love for Nami, was enraged by this sign. Determined to pull an end to Orochi once and for all, Nagi traveled to the beast's cave in place of his beloved. The Moon Cave, a place as dark as evil itself, served as Orochi's home as Nagi stood bravely before the entrance. A beast appeared, eyes glowing crimson upon eight thrashing necks. Orochi stood tall before him, anxious for another sacrifice. Nagi leapt with incredible grace, swinging his blade violently. Valiantly, my apologies. On and on he sliced well into the moonless night, but Orochi's hide was like steel. The blade left m nary a scratch. At long last, Nagi, his energy spent from the intense battle, dropped to his knees, fatigued and gasping for breath. He knew he was staring death in the face. It was then that the wolf appeared. As if to protect Nagi, it stood its ground before Orochi. In the darkness of the cave, the wolf's coat shone brilliantly. Alas, it was Shiranui, the wolf that dwelled outside the village. Bearing its fearsome claw, Shiranui leapt toward Orochi. Orochi reared its terrifying heads, readying its fangs for battle. The two beasts struggled wildly thrashing in the darkness. Nami. 
Mysterious and terrifying, the spectacle continued. Shiranui summoned gusts of divine wind to encounter Orochi's flames. As Orochi closed in on Shiranui, his sharpened claws glistening. A gigantic tree suddenly sprouted forth, shielding the wolf. Shiranui fought gallantly to gain the upper hand. However, Orochi, protected by a mystical power, was not easily bested. Shiranui covered its gashes. Majestic coat dyed crimson. Stood exhausted before the mighty Orochi. Orochi saw a chance to strike what would be the final blow, but Shiranui refused to give in with its last ounce of strength. The majestic wolf gazed heavenward and unleashed a mighty howl. Suddenly, the black clouds overhead dissipate, dissipated. Yes, it dissipated. The light from above glinted off Nagi's sword as a beacon of hope. Guided by his sword, Nagi, who had been taking shelter in the shadows, stood proudly to face his adversary, channeling all his strength into his scare scarred and battered arms. He leapt ferociously towards Orochi, his sword poised high. The golden sword danced in his hands like a puppet on a string. One by one, Orochi's fearsome head separated from their owner. Orochi's broken body collapsed in a lake of its own blood. In that instant, the curse that plagued the villagers was lifted. As the battle subsided, the sun shone once again in the sky. Shiranui had succumbed to Orochi's poison and struggled to breathe. Nagi scooped the beast into his arms and returned to Kamaki. When they reached the village, Shiranui was no longer moving. The village elder gently stroked the wolf's head. In response, Shiranui let out a hoarse and pitiful bark, then closed its eyes and drifted off as if into slumber. Peace had at last returned to Kamaki village. In honor of Shiranui's heroic exploits, the villagers erected a shrine and placed the statue of the wolf within it. Nagi's sword was christened Tsukuyomi and placed inside the moon cave. The villagers all looked forward to an age of endless peace. However, this is not the end of the story. There is more to this tale than most people know. 100 years has passed since Nagi and Shiranui's heroic exploits. It happened so quickly that no one in the village even took notice. Is this the legendary sword? Is this Tsukuyomi, the sword that banished the dreaded Orochi? No, it couldn't be. It's just a legend, nothing but a fairy tale.
horrible tragedy suddenly swept over the land. However, there was one village that seemed to escape the terrible curse. The tiny settlement of Kamiki village enjoyed the protection of a sacred tree. It is here that the real story begins. Wood Spirit Sakuya. How troublesome. This is just like the ancient prophecy of doom. What has transpired to bring about such calamity? We must act quickly. There is no time to lose. My power has diminished over the years I've spent protecting this area. I don't have much time left in this world. I'm a Terasu. Now is the time. We have never needed your power more. Shine your divine light upon this broken and polluted world. Let your heavenly rays become our hope as, your, as you guide us all. Okami Amaterasu. Ah, such divine white light. Such beauty and grace. The only one capable of such a wondrous spectacular is none other than our mother and the origin of all that is, Amaterasu. How delightful to see that the savior whose brave sacrifice sealed away the evil demon so many years ago has not changed one bit. Seeing you emerge after so many years spent as a statue brings happiness to my heart. <laughs> Amaterasu Gaze upon you Gaze above you And take in the condition of the sky Since your untimely departure From our midst The world has succumbed To de uh, devious and vicious beasts They have ravaged our fine And bountiful country of Nippon but never have the circumstances been worse than they are at this very moment. Please use your powers to banish the darkness and punish those who would do us harm. Hmm? Eh? What is this? Has something stolen its way into my robe? <laughs> Ew. What on earth? You again? Oh, 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 are you nuts? Boy, for a little thing, you sure make a big fuss. I was just trying to make the conversation a bit more interesting. I don't know why I'm doing this voice, but that's all. What, were you napping in my clothes again, Bug? Bug, I told you a thousand times not to call me that. I'm a wandering artist. The name's Isun. Wandering artist Isun. I'll show you just how great I am, and it won't be long till you're bowing before my great brush. Well, what do you think? Even cuter than the real thing, no? What's with you, furball? You look kind of down in the dumps. Actually, you look kind of familiar. Got it, you look just like that statue of Shiranui. Whoa, what do you think you're doing? Are you crazy? A handsome guy like me should never be co covered in wolf slobber. You'll, re you'll regret messing with the great is soon. Don't make me use my prize sword, Din Komaru, against you. Yeah. 
what, what, what's that growling sound? And why does it sound so dark anyway? Oh great god, Amaterasu. I've used all the power I have to protect Kamiki Village. The village lives on. Their spirits lie encased in my fruit. Cut it free and the village will be reborn. I trust in you. I know that you will lead us down the right path. Only your awesome power can restore life to the world. The trees return to normal, huh? That Sakia girl sure says some weird stuff. The villager spirits are being kept inside the fruit. That's the fruit. That girl said that if you cut it down, the village will be restored. But it's awfully high up there if you don't use some kind of special power. There's no way you're going to reach it. This darkness is really getting to me too. A lot can happen when you're taking a nap. Where are we? It got awfully quiet all of a sudden. I don't remember any place like this in the village. Well, we better keep our eyes peeled. You can use this right stick to look around. L1 to change your point of view. Boy, you really look so helpless. You sure are gonna be okay? Hold on. That's an origin mirror. They say once your reflection appears on its surface, your memories will be stored in the mirror for all of eternity. Well, to put it shortly, you can save your progress here. And let me give you a little advice. You should save a number of game files. That way you could always go back if you get stuck or something. Gotta be prepared, especially when you're still learning the ropes. All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna go ahead and save. This has been Double J here. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm. Oh, actually. There we go. That's so much better in regards. Well, everybody. That has been enough for episode one. The prologue for Okami. My voices are not the best. I try. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time. Johnny. I don't know why I said that, but... I'll catch you all again in the next episode.